Ladies and gentlemen, much time has passed since last we saw them, but once again, they return. We of course refer to Five Guys and a Gigalith. When last we saw our intrepid warriors, they had been soundly crushed at the back of an ice-cold cave. And so, now wanting to train in even harsher conditions to make sure they are prepared, they return to the city where we first saw them in Season 4 and clamber atop a high sky building, hoping that the ice-cold conditions will make them stronger. Potato not a fan of heights, decides to stand by the edge of the building to try and conquer his vertigo. And yet, as he stands there, the wind blows stronger and colder and meaner than before, and he realizes that this is no normal wind anymore. And as he looks up, he sees a platform floating in mid-air as if defying gravity, and atop such a platform, a frost lass slides on a white glove attempting to beckon Potato towards it to jump off the edge and like a landslide crash on the ground. But Potato knows better than that. He throws rocks the Frost Lass's way knowing that it cannot engage in direct combat and though he is cursed, he defiles and defeats Frost Lass one on one. However, at this point it is Potato for whom the bell tolls, and so he scurries away from the edge, allowing Kong to jump in front of him and take the toxic, as if it were nothing, absorbing it into his purple skin. And Thunderbolt is what Kong opts for, as he is in the sky and raining thunder down from the clouds seems the optimal play to go for, smashing Darmanitan upon switching and furrowing his eyebrows ablaze as they are. But now fearful of his blitzing tactics, Potato comes back to the edge to take the hit as well as a rock goddamn can. And now knowing that the demon monkey must switch out, he opts for Stealth Rock to aid his team. But he is thwarted immediately as Blastoise switches in, a known spin doctor. And though he does not go for the spin just yet, he tries for the scald. And ladies and gentlemen, a critical hit to strike Potato. The hacks again falls upon him when he could have exploded and annihilated the spinning top. But now it falls to Nino King to go in full force with that earth power thinking that perhaps the foe would switch to his Nino King to take the Thunderbolt, and yet he does not. He rapid spins instead. And Kong, so blinded by the clouds, now thinking that Bronzong would switch in to take a hit, opts for Fire Blast instead, and yet he is once again incorrect. There is no choice anymore. He must summon Zeus. He must ask for the power of the gods, the bolts to strike down, and he is correct. Third time lucky, third time blessed. But with his HP so low, there is nothing more Kong can do. And so he is well trained in hanging off of tall buildings and beating his chest and dragging down helicopters from the sky. He must now fall to Darmanitan's flare blitz, but not before Hitmonchan comes in upon the edge to strike with a Mac punch upon whatever switches in. Machamp opts to be that opponent, and now Machamp shall feel the critical wrath, the revenge that Potato did take. Strike him back as a drain punch drains all his energy, his power, his potential into I will kick you's glove. But once again, it is time for the bell to toll, and Hitmonchan, now powered up, now juiced, now full of Machamp's energy, uses the drain punch not once, not twice, but a third, a three, a triple times to eliminate Bronzong and turn that bell from steel to hell. Oh, that ringing, how it resonates, how it makes such a glorious sound, a victorious sound. Now hearing his fallen comrade so clearly through the atmosphere, Nido King enters the field, taking a Mac punch and shrugging it off the shoulders, as he also calls forth from the gods to strike thunder down upon I will kick you. But ladies and gentlemen, it would not be five guys in a gigalith without our lost prophet, the fucking man. And he shouts from the rooftops, screams his fucking heart out as he says, Giga Impact! And so knocks Nido King from his pedestal, like Saruman from the Tower of Isengard, as he falls and skewers himself on the streets below. 
Now Darmanitan taking full advantage of that recharge, opts for a stone edge, lets it fly and through the sky it slices the fucking man down. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a solution, we have a weapon, we have a sword that McBoss has within his sheath and as he draws it, he knows the time has come for Smidgen's Bane to make its namesake heard as he takes the smidgen off of the Darmanitan, stands victorious atop the building, like a champion, like a man, like a believer. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Five Guys and a Gigalith. If you enjoyed this video, then take up your own Smidgen's Bane and plunge it forth into the heart of the like button. Make that button bleed. Until next time, goodbye.